Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look here at six different ways of converting from colour to black and white. And in doing so, we're looking at why as well, what's going on, so we can understand kind of in more detail what this thing is. Typically, you might get a picture like this and say, well, let's convert to black and white. And a common way to think about that is if we go to HSL, Hue, Saturation and Luminosity, and if we take the saturation and turn it down, then we, hey, we've got a black and white picture here. However, if we go back to this, look, this is yellow over here and this is red over here. And we turn it down and the red and the yellow look the same. And the reason for this is because it's taking the saturation out, it's desaturating, removing the colour. And because they were both saturated colours, they're both ending up as a grey, because you end up with grey if you turn down the saturation. So let's have a look in more detail at uh, what's going on here. It's interesting to look here at the colour wheel, just taking out the primary and secondary colours. And when you look at this, look at them in terms of what looks dark and what looks light. You can see this side here, these three colours, look lighter than these three colours here. And in fact, Blue looks the darkest and opposite is the lightest. And then the second lightest is cyan and opposite that is the second darkest. So let's look at that again in more detail. Here we're looking at what the eye is doing and you've got a bump here down the bottom which is blue. And these are the cones, the parts of the eye that, that look at colour. So these are the blue cones, they're short, medium, long wavelength that are used. Green, look at this, covers a whole load of things right from the right down here to right up here. So the green is very sensitive to light. So that's quite an important thing. It's one of the reasons that green comes over as looking on the lighter side. And then you've got red. And although we are attracted to red, it actually looks darker in a block of colour. So let's take the colour wheel colours and just put them in a row here. And this is just a reference because we're going to look at things next here. We're going to start off with perceived brightness of this. So we start from the bottom. Blue is the darkest colour. Red is the next one. If you look at it as a block of colour then you can see it does look darker than the ones above it. Then you've got yellow, cyan and green at the top but they all start with green. And it's because green is such a strong colour, it looks light. But then we add red to make the yellow. So in other words, you've got the pixels here, they're like little lights shining out. So you've got the green shining out and the red shining out. Well, that's got to be lighter than green by itself. And the next one, the cyan, you've got the green and blue to make the cyan. And in the middle here, the only one we've got left here, is magenta and that's made up of the two darkest colours. So you get some blue and then red on top of that. So let's take those and have a look at how we're going to work with them in the different types of converting to monochrome. So to start off we'll start with HSL. To do this by the way I've got the assistant manager here I've got add adjustment as child layer and filter as child layer so that these will just nest underneath these. So I turn on here, this is just another copy of that. And then I'm going to put in an HSL. And then when I turn down the saturation, because all colours are saturated, it all goes to grey. So saturated colours turn to grey, it's the non-saturated colours that turn to various not quite so dark grey. This is the mid grey as far as you can go. With vibrance, if I add the vibrance control, turn on the vibrance there, I've got a saturation here as well. But if I turn this down, then it ends up to grey, but now it's taking some account of these colours here. So in other words, blue is the darkest, it's not black and yellow is the lightest and it's not white but it's getting close there and you can see there's a very clear line here the top three are lighter 
and the bottom three are darker. And there's not a lot of difference between these two here, here and then these two here. What about levels? What am I going to do there? Well, there are different ways you can do this. You can do levels with various other controls which use colour models. But I'm just going to go to grey. And notice here with this, the grey conversion here is not the same as the vibrance one. It's similar, but not quite. It's actually a better one because it goes down in more even steps as it go down here. So that's quite a significant thing. So what I've got here then is that this works off a formula and it's luminance of this, which is a measure of that, how light or dark it is. It's 0 0.3 times red, which is 30% of red, 59% of green, because green is quite significant, and only 11% of blue, because that's the smaller one. So there's more given to green, less to, you know, almost half of that to red, and even a third of that again to blue. Which is why on blue you only get that 11%. And then you get red, green and blue. The, the 11%, 30% and 59%. But then you start adding them up. So if I go to magenta, that 41% is made up, because this is made up of the red and the green, sorry, the red and the blue, then it's the 30 plus 11 is 41. Similarly with the cyan there it's 70% because that's a combination of the green and the blue. The green is 59 and the blue is 11, which adds up to 70%. Then yellow is a combination of the green and the red, which is 30% and 59%, which gives you 89%. We can use this if we want to do it in the black and white controller. So I go to black and white here go to black and white here and I can adjust these to those percentage values. So and these are for these here. So red is 30%. So I put in 30% there. The blue, let's do the red, green and blue first. So green then is 59%. and blue is 11%. You can see here we're already having an effect on these, but we're not affecting these three here because the secondary cards could need to add in those. So the yellow is 89%. So that's 89. See, this here now is the same as this here. The yellow we got in, the Cyan then is 70%. So I put, so that's the same here. So these are matching. And the last one left is magenta, which is 41%. So I put 41. And there we've got the black and white control here has ended up with the same as this here. And what it means here is, is the advantage of this is that you can now start to play with it. So I can start adjusting these to values other than those calculators. So you can create different balance of colours across here. But this is using all of the, the red, the green, the blue, the cyan, magenta and the yellow. So there's one more way that we can do it. And this is a procedural texture in which you put in, and don't worry about this, it's not difficult, a formula. So now I go down here to procedural texture and I put click plus here to put one in. Let's move it over there so we can see what's going on there. And the reason it's zero here because it's on red, it's just zeroed at the red. We want the green and the blue in here. So whatever formula we put in here, is going to go to this and we can use this one down here so I can literally go to the this control C to copy that go back to the procedural texture go into here and control V to paste that in and then when I hit enter I've got the same again as this so I've now got a formula here 
for doing this, which means I can now use this. I can change the values in here to very precisely. So I could say 0 0.25, that's 25 percent red. And it starts to make this change. I can also use down here things like sliders. So I've got a slider here from 0 to 1, which is and I'm just going to go. Let's make this red, green and blue down here. So this is the multiplier. So it's A for the A down here, which is red. This one B is green. This is blue. So this then is the green is the B. This is C. But these are all because of the one now here, they've just pushed them all right up. So you need to start pulling them down. You can't see exactly what the values are. If you do that, instead of using this 0 to 1 here, you can use the R for real, which is a decimal number. But you can start playing with these individually. So you can kind of guess that the red was around about a third. Green was right up there, about 89. And blue was down here. So you can see you're now getting the sort of thing from that. You can even take that off here and change that C there to 1 minus B minus A. And now the red and green sets it and it just compensates it so it all adds up to one at the end. So you're not going to get anything falling off the end, but it gives you a lot more control. So you can do things like this. So there we go, a six very different ways of converting to black and white. And each has its values and uses, and you can literally go from HSL to use the vibrance, which is a quick way of doing it, but doesn't give you quite the, the proper luminosity that you get, which is the standard one that everybody uses. You can do it in the black and white and change those variables to get different shades of it. Or you can go to procedural texture and you put it straight in a formula. You can have sliders and controls and things on that. So that's what we can do. We'll just finish off back here. We'll take that one off. And when I use move very often, if I just want to add a quick one, I just go to levels, change that to grey. And that gives, I think, a better quick and standard conversion. That's it. And thank you very much for watching.